Championship Wrestling for 10 years, providing excellence and innovation in virtual wrestling. since their arrival and once they won those excel tag team titles they have been the team to beat they have been the standard that sets them apart from every other team in excel and quite frankly if you want to go there every other team in acw period diddy kong and the biggie biggie took will start things off for the respective teams here diddy kong with the nice lariat and it seems to me that 2dk are all business tonight I just stated earlier there was no meme graphics, there were no special entrants, there was no swagger dancing. Diddy and Donkey Kong are serious like a late period. 
And there was a Conan reference in 2018, but here we are. Diddy Kong, hard Irish Schwitz. Habiki to his corner. Yeah, this is a very different 2DK. And I'm not sure, I mean, I like the aggression because they're going to need it if they're going to face Night Raid in two weeks. But, you know, the crowd has really grown accustomed to 2DK and how Diddy and Donkey Kong have been able to revitalize, the, revitalize excuse me, their careers in ACW and more specifically, CAW. So the swagger is the appeal to 2DK. They become fan favorites amongst the ACW fandom. But sometimes you got to be serious. Sometimes you have to be a little more assertive than you normally are. As Donkey Kong just took out Habiki with a clothesline. And DK now rushes with another clothesline onto Hibiki. And that's no shame to Hibiki. You're just not going to take down someone like Donkey Kong who has the strength and size over you at every point. Oh my god. Did you see how high he beat he just went up the air? That is the kind of strength that will intimidate an opponent. And I'm surprised Donkey Kong can go the way he's going right now here in this match. After that brutal assault from Wave and Lubok last week on Excel number 84. And now Diddy Kong has tagged back in. Nice double team maneuver from 2DK. Diddy Kong now. Uh, Hibiki in his corner here. Nice vertical suplex. Sends down Hibiki. Falls up with a nice fist drop. Right across the face. In the face! In the face! Now Diddy Kong now. Oh my goodness, snap drop kick. Takes down Hibiki. Goes for the cover. One, two. And a kick out from Hibiki as Kazuki tried saving, but Donkey Kong stops him. And 2DK are so far in control, they are running the pace. Oh, maybe not, because Hibiki goes down as Kazuki was trying to go after Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong back suplexes Kazuki in the ring. And Diddy Kong sends. Kazuki over the top rope. Diddy Kong getting a little bit of his swagger back. That's good to see. But Hibiki blocks the attempt. And now Hibiki just like that will take over with that distraction. Oh! It's a rough kick to the back. Now Diddy Kong miles away from Donkey Kong here. Now is within the corner of Hibiki Kazuki. Hibiki now going to drag Kazuki to the corner. I mean, Diddy Kong as Kazuki is tagged in. Drop to hold, elbow drop combo never fails. And another elbow drop for good measure. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight in our main event, Edward Elric will go one on one against Ishiko Kurosaki. A first time ever matchup here in ACW. And knowing those two in their history, among various comp promotions, cover one, two, third. No, only a two there for Kazuki. Knowing their past in CAW, it'll surely be an interesting one. It was one that Roger Smith personally picked. Roger Smith has been the one hand picking Edward Elric's opponents as of late in preparation for Elric's match against Haru for the XL title coming up at Ground Zero. And after what transpired last week with Haru Lori taking out Elric, Elric has a little bit of a receipt for what Elric did to Haru prior to that episode. This will be one of the more important matches in ACW history. Certainly Edward Elric's biggest match in his career. Nice tag team maneuvers there by Hibiki Kazuki. One, two, and Diddy once again kicks out at two. Ah, it's another kick to the back. Let's take a look at the offense here so far. Look at that. Out that maneuver, Hibiki went for the cover, but Diddy Kong kicked out at 
two. And that guy just kicked him right on his back. Back lock, Kazuki now tagged back in here. Nice uh, teamwork here by Kazuki. He big attack in frequently to keep Diddy guessing on his feet. Five jacks set on the mat. This cover by Kazuki. One, two, and a kick out. That's Donkey Kong. Just got knocked from behind from Hibiki. And 2DK are not looking too good so far with Hibiki and Kazuki controlling the pace of this matchup. A lot of things going on in ACW as of late. If you didn't read the announcement last week, it was made official that LeBron James has been officially invited by Anime Championship Wrestling to appear for Animania 5, which will be held at his new home basketball city of Los Angeles, California at the Staples Center this December. And we still have not heard any word from the bronze team or him himself. Whoa, rocket dropper there by Kazuki Hibiki. But hopefully once we hear something, we will relay that to all of you as we take a look at this replay of the rocket dropper yet again. Also next week, Excel number 87, excuse me, Excel 86, a little bit ahead of myself, Excel number 86 will be streamed live on YouTube. The reason for that, that is the first time ever experience for Excel, but the reason why that's also happening is because immediately following Excel number 86, we will finally reveal the 32 participants that will compete in the first ever Glamour X Element Tournament. There has been a lot of speculation as to who is going to be a part of that tournament from the anime and gaming world. Well, that will be revealed next week on a live, a truly live edition of Excel number 86 immediately following. So make sure you stick around and stay tuned for that. Now, Biggie's on top here. As Diddy is struggling to get back on his feet. He does. He beat, he's waiting. Oh, and a nice swift drop kick from the top turnbuckle. Sending Diddy crashing down to the mat. Here's the cover. Can he beat, he pull it off here? And DK's right there to break it up. A little bit near to DK's corner. And if I'm Diddy Kong, I need to get a tag here fairly soon. Because let's face it. Are not 100% here. And knowing what Night Raid are all about, they're going to need to be 100% come ground zero in a mere two weeks. Because a lot of teams have said that they'll beat Night Raid. And they all fell down to the sword of Tatsumi, Wave, and Lubok that is now being led by the devious General SDAF. So every team says it. But they can't just do it. Let's take a look again at Diddy Kong's offense coming back to this matchup here with that nice slip drop kick. Diddy Kong now tagging in DK and here we go. This is exactly what 2DK needs here. And a double flapjack drops Hibiki. And now the bigger and stronger man or donkey or monkey, whatever the hell you want to call him, it all fits. Nice German suplex, and down goes Hibiki, and DK is a ball of fire. Whips Hibiki to the ropes here, and a back body toss drops him back first onto the mat. Showing Kazuki who the dominant force is. Oh, look at that, just uses weight to pull Hibiki back to his way. And look at this now, oh my god! Full Nelson sit out bomb by the legendary DK. As him and Diddy Kong will be a part of this year's Super Smash Brothers installment called Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Which is around the same time as we will be doing Animania 5. And look at this! A delayed vertical super. He was doing squats! You try doing that with another human being and see how far you get. I doubt you'll even get to one. Hibiki's up. Oh, DK tried going for a move from the middle ropes. Did not connect. That's probably why DK doesn't go to the top of middle ropes so much. But DK blocks the elbow attempt. Nice fireman's carried by Hibiki. Whips himself to the ropes here. And oh my god! Drops him! Face first on the mat! Take a look at this again! And look at the height! In slow motion!
Oh! Bang! That is crazy strong. And ZK went for the backhand, did not work, and he beat him with a nice clothesline. And that has DK dazed a bit. Kazuki now, the man being tagged in for his team. Kazuki up to the top rope. If Hibiki and Kazuki want to capitalize, now would be the time to do it. Cross body onto DK. I go. I would have went for the pin. I don't know why Kazuki went for the taunt. But I guess he felt that he needed to do more work onto DK. But damn it, I would have went for the pin there. The match continues though. Kazuki now wait. Oh, DK reverses Kazuki's momentum to make him stronger. Man! What an opening contest here for Excel number 85 so far here in Champaign, Illinois. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my lord! I felt my entire abdomen cringe from DK's knee there. And now DK, oh, just runs him over like a ton of bricks with feet. And now DK, gonna put Kazuki up here. And now uh, Kazuki reversed whatever that was gonna be. Probably another delayed vertical suplex. Kazuki countered it, snap DDT! A snap DDT! by Kazuki onto DK. He's gonna try to go from the top rope yet again. As DK is crawling to his feet here. One knee up. As Kazuki waits, DK's up now. Drop kick from behind. I think DK didn't even know where he was despite getting back up. Once again, DK back up on his feet. What will Kazuki go for here? Oh, the headbutt! You can hear that echo around State Farm Center with a close line to follow. And just like that, DK takes back control. Oh my god! Backhand to the face! Have you felt a backhand from a gorilla? Then you wouldn't even be here. And we'll follow it up! Jungle hijinks! Jungle hijinks from DK! And now Diddy Kong will get the tag! That's Kazuki's right back up. Diddy Kong with a scoot slam. Diddy's going up top here. And what's it? Oh, Tater Bomb! A tribute to the late great giant! Two! Two DK are victorious! They were all business tonight as you saw it clear and direct what 2DK means when they are in business. With devastating backhand that led to a jungle hijinks and then from a tribute to the late great Leon White, a fire bomb will finish off the Biki and Kazuki here tonight. What a match here. And wait a minute, Diddy Kong has the microphone. Let's listen in clear. That's, that's very obvious. Swaggy did he? <laughs> did he just call as that a thought? Can you do that? Is he allowed to do that? <laughs> what? Diddy Kong not afraid of Night Raid. Donkey Kong not afraid of Night Raid. They are calling the trio out. And we will find out if Night Raid have the balls to come at them directly, or if this is just gonna be another into well, that's not Night Raid's music, but that is the music of one general SDAP. SDAP is answering the call here. This is gets messy. Pretty quickly here. What does she have in store?
of it, Diddy Kong declaring that him and Donkey Kong will become the new XL Tag Team Champions come Ground Zero. And I'm not trying to discredit them, but I've heard that story before from many of the teams. But can 2DK finally be that team that ends the reign of Night Race? That remains to be seen, but I love the confidence that 2DK are displaying here tonight. Let it be known that they will not be intimidated by Night Rage tactics anymore. There's General S. Death entering Roger Smith's office. I don't know what that's all about, really. But nonetheless, tonight in our main event, Edward Elwood will go one-on-one -on -one against Ichigo Kurosaki. Two men that have a lot of past history with one another and various other promotions. That will happen tonight also. Akuma will be speaking about his Ground Zero match against Aang. Now that Aang accepts the challenge, last week's coming to Sunday 34. But Kevin makes me get some glamour X action as the rock band Asuka Kazama takes on the natural Ino Yamanaka. Well, there they are. The natural beauty, Ino Yamanaka. The natural giant, Deanne. And after what transpired last week, this now know that in their match between each other at Ground Zero for the Glamour X title, if Jerry Sonata were to lose the match at Ground Zero, she will not be able to invoke a rematch clause like various former champions do when they immediately lose the title. That means if Eno wins the title at Ground Zero, Jerry will have to go all the way to the back of the line to be a contender once again. But the catch here is that Eno cannot have the end at ringside. Should she even show up at ringside, then the match will be disqualified and Jerry will retain the title. As Ino Yamanaka waits for her opponent here tonight. And this is a crowd here in Champagne. Giving a loud ovation to the Rocket, Asuka Kazama. And Asuka Kazama. That was very vital to helping Jerry Sonata 
last running sub. You'll take a look here. Jury was ambushed by the Naturals, obviously. And Asuka came to her rescue to stop any further repercussions onto Jury Sonata. So this match is now being made here tonight as Ino Yamanaka will take on Asuka in singles action. Quite frankly, this may be a two-on-one situation with Deanne now they're out at ringside. And Asuka's not privy to that. You know, Asuka's used to that type of maneuver from Ino Yamanaka. Last single in Excel. Asuka Zama challenged Hino Yamanaka for the Glamour X Championship. She was close, man. She was close to ending Eno's reign. But unfortunately, just came up a little bit short thanks to the distraction from Deanne. Bell is wrong, and here we go. Eno versus Asuka. Our second matchup here tonight on Excel, number 85. Oh, wow! What a roundhouse kick! Patrick Swayze is laughing in his grave. Cover. One. Two. Oh my god, that was almost the end of the match. Wow, what a roundhouse kick, folks. Works into the ropes here. Drop kicks her down. Back to the mat. And Eno's going to take a little bit of a break. Got it to her benefit. Take a look how this match started. Just pushes Eno. And out of nowhere, Roadhouse falls up there with a drop kick. And Eno spills out to the outside. Back live in Deanne and you know just having a little bit of a talk, probably getting her rejuvenated. As I alluded to and stated earlier tonight, next we're gonna excel 86 on a live edition on Excel number 86. Immediately following that episode, we will reveal the 32 participants that will compete in the first ever and monumental Glamour X Element Tournament coming up in October. More specifically, on Monday, October 1st of this year, the Glamour X Division will be taken to the next level. And I've heard certain names, okay? I've heard certain names. Now, I ultimately gave the final approval, so I might know some of the names that you may be speculating about, but I have seen certain names on that list covered by Osuka. One, two, and the natural kicks out at two. I have seen certain names on that participation list that may shock you, folks. There are certain people on that list that you are probably familiar with, but I'm telling you right now, there are certain others on that list that you will have ooh, a pure bliss and an enjoyment of being able to see compete in the Element Tournament. This will be the greatest showcase of virtual women's wrestling like none other, like no other tournament has provided. So that Element Tournament will begin its rumbling starting next week on Excel 86 as Deanne distracted Asuka and Ino with that knee to the back. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Deanne, this is the reason why Deanne is being barred from ringside at ground zero. Because stuff like that can cost Jury her title in her first title defense after going through a grueling best of seven series against former champion Reiko Hinomoto. For her to lose that title for the first time in her first title defense would be devastating. And then you don't get a rematch clause to inject. So that means you have to go to the back of the line to just contend again. And knowing how Eno's first reign as champion went, here's the cover of one, two, and Asuka kicks out at two. And knowing how Eno's reign went the first time, do you really want another Eno title reign like that? I don't think so. Eno now, deadlift drop with that suplex onto Asuka. Nice quick cover, but Asuka's foot was right under the ropes. Take a look at this again. Grabs her from the ground up and then does a nice vertical suplex, dropping her down. Back line, look at Eno taunting Asuka here. Nothing new from the natural. You know, I never ever doubted Eno's talents. I mean, Eno is a great talent. She's an, she's an exceptional talent here in ACW and specifically the Glamour X Division, but it's just the way her attitude, oh my God! What a Masawa-ass elbow to the face! Lord rest 
Tissel. As I was saying, Eno's talents are obvious and they're there, but it's just the attitude and the tactics that she uses, it overshadows her obvious quality talent that she brings to the ring. And she continues to work on Asuka's back with that drop kick. Another pin attempt here. One, two. Oh, that kick out. Now it's this, you know, dragging Asuka away from the ropes here. And up. Oh, steps on the arm socket. And Ina with no remorse. Unbelievable, but not really. Oh, uh, it's a good no, it was blocked by Asuka. Roaring over blocks, kick to the midsection. Another kick. Asuka drags the arm there. Ino drags Asuka's injured arm. Whips herself to the ropes here. And does another nice switch arm drag. Deanna proving that ringside as Ino continues the assault to the arm. Not again. Oh, man. I think I might have heard a pop there too. And now, oh, look at this. Look at this. A nice standing moonsault. Let's take a look at this in the replay here. Great aerobatics, acrobatics, excuse me, from Ino Yamanaka. Now, Ino going onto the top turnbuckle here. Asuka slow to get back up as Ino awaits. Oh, cross body does not connect for Eno. And now it's Asuka's turn to possibly take advantage of the situation. And she does. Nice head scissors takedown. Now she'll drag Eno to the ropes here. Asuka trying to go for something, but was a bit far away from the target. Whips Eno to the corner. Place Eno on top of the turnbuckle pad here. What is Asuka planning to go for? Oh boy, oh man, look at that arm drag from the top turnbuckle. And now Asuka, oh, big body splash. That was pretty far, almost more than half of the ring. One, two, and Eno with a kick out. Can you imagine if Eno lost here? Ahead of her match at Ground Zero, what a demoralizing loss would be for her. Would it be for her? And look at that nice monkey flip onto Eno, and oh, again, again, Deanne getting involved when she shouldn't be involved. She shouldn't even be at ringside. I mean, this is why that rule's being implemented at Ground Zero in two weeks. Oh, Nino! Kick to the midsection. Oh, oh my god! Just flattened her like that. That is Oh my god. One, this could this could be over. This could be over. Oh Nino! Only got a two, but barely. That was looking like a three. After Diaz's distraction, Nino just takes out Asuka. With that just that devastating inverse DDT. I'm sure Eno will figure out an in for that because I sure as hell couldn't figure out one. Monkey flip. Oh, Asuka stick the landing. Drop kicks the knee. And this crowd in Illinois, Champagne to be specific, love that. And now Asuka going up top here. A little groggy to do so, but understandable. Drop kicks Eno down to the mat. This has been great Glamour X action, as expected from talents such as Eno and Asuka. Ooh. Oh, pulls her hair down, it looked like almost. And Asuka's gonna try again to the top rope here. And elbow drop, flew very high. Cover one, two, she's got it, no she doesn't. Whew, that was that was as close as a, of a near fall you'll get there. Match continues. Suka whipped to the corner. Another monkey flip. And now Suka plotting for something here. 
Ledger gets some recovery time. And again, Deanne is saying something to Asuka to distract her. Th this is the problem. Get Deanne the hell away from there. What is going on? Oh, and Ino uses the distraction for a third time. And she's going to go for the natural order. Oh, no. Come on. No. No. Oh, and Ino wins it. Ino victorious due to Deanne's distraction throughout the entire match. I mean, take a look at this again. This is why. This is why Deanne had to be banned at Ground Zero. Because stuff like this could end Jerry's title reign before it even begins. Ino's victorious. But she better hope that she can do that again at Ground Zero in two weeks without, without Deanne, her enforcer, at ringside. That's a very unfortunate loss for a super here tonight. And, and uh, Deanne just bought a chair in for Eno. Oh, come on, this is not, this is not. Oh, and the ref might want to get the hell out there. And Eno's about to win. Oh, there's the Glam Rex champion, Jerry Sonata, coming to Asuka's rescue. A little bit of a receipt back to Asuka for last week. Jerry will not allow the Naturals to ambush an assault on Asuka here tonight. Good off of the Glam Rex champion. We go back to take seven number 84 in Chicago last week where Sagawa was victorious over Rock Lee. And just like that, the television champion Joe Agashi assaulted Sagat's knee from behind and then would nail a figure four across the turnbuckle post, damaging Sagat. What we did here is that Sagat's knee, although it's not personally or permanently damaged, that will affect ground zero, there are some rumors that there was a strain on that knee. Thanks to Joe Agashi's actions.
Does Akumi know who the hell Revy is? Revy will, Revy will beat a bitch's ass. And that's her words, not mine. Akumi better be very careful with who she messes with. Because she is not the one. And now we're about to be joined by a former Excel champion. The demon, Akuma. Let's take a look at last week as Akuma fought Edward Elric in the main event. Aang appeared and went after Akuma. After Akuma earlier that night challenged Aang to a match whenever Aang was ready. And it looks like after what Aang did last week, Aang pretty much accepted the challenge right then and there. So that match will be going down at ground zero. Question is, what will Akuma say about that supposed challenge that Aang has now accepted? Wow, that is one grueling matchup, to say the least. But Akuma has made it official. It will be Akuma versus Aang at Ground Zero in the first ever Three Sins of Death match. I pray for whoever comes out victorious that you don't win in that type of match. You simply survive. Aang and Akuma will meet again at a ground zero, with the stakes much higher, once again.
you know, when CW was, you know, back in the day, you know, I was the first to really do that transition. Really. And the game has officially changed, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to ACW, Jerry Sonata. Welcome to the Sonata Show. Welcome to the Sonata Show. Welcome to the Sonata Show. And it's the past and the present in women's wrestling here tonight. Folks, you're in for a ride. We've got a new leverage champion, Jerry Sonata. Welcome back to Excel number 85, the song that you're listening to is in transmission by the band Fire from the Gods, the official theme song for Ground Zero off their album Narrative, available in retail stores wherever you buy and shop for your music. We're taking a look at the match card so far for Ground Zero. Diary will defend the Excel Tag Team titles against 2DK. 2DK made the statement earlier tonight that they are not afraid of Night Raid and their tactics. Will that blow well for them in two weeks, or will they fall like every other team that has faced? The devastating night raid. Akuma and A is official for Ground Zero in the first ever three sins of death match. Who will escape? And will this be the final encounter between two entities here at Ground Zero? Also, in Glamrex action, Yuri Yamanaka defends the title against Jury Zanata. You saw what happened earlier. Should Jury lose the title, she doesn't get a rematch clause. But Deanna's banned from inside for Hino. Who will come out on top as the Glamrex champion? Also, it's a title for Super situation. Once again, Joe Agachi defends the television title against Sagat. Sagat is being reported to have a spray on his knee. Will that be an affection onto this match? Or will he retain his career and become the new television champion? And then the biggest main event in XL history. Paul Ford defends XL Championship against Edward Ellis, who is leaving ACW the night after. Can Elric become world champion finally? Or will Harvard Glory leave him empty handed once again? It is ACW Ground Zero live, Friday, July 27th on YouTube from Newark, New Jersey at the Prudential Center. Join us for what is sure to be a monumental event that will shift the course for ACW for many years to come. Well, it's finally here. It's time for our main event of the evening. Edward Elric versus Ichigo Kurosaki. First time ever.
is a known entity in CAW. And various promotions has been a central and integral piece. And that is no different in ACW. But it was interesting last week when Ichigo overheard what Paul and Roger apparently were talking about and asked Roger Smith directly what is going on between him and Harley Glory. And Roger basically told, well he basically told Ichigo, look, this is my problem, not yours. Stay out of it. This does not concern me. And I'm sure that's probably why we're getting this match because Roger in some way felt insulted that Ichigo asked him that question directly. And so out of spite, just my opinion, out of spite, Roger Smith set up this match between Roger. I mean, excuse me, Roger set up this match between Ichigo and Edward. And you heard earlier, Edward and Ichigo are not the best of friends if you know their past. But they are starting to speculate what is truly going on here in Excel as of late. But he even went to confront Harlem Glory, and it was very intense in that locker room as well. But despite how it happened, we are getting this match for the first time in ACW, the main event of Excel number 85, Edward Elric versus Ichigo Kurosaki is happening right now. Elric and Ichigo going face to face with each other here. They know each other very well. They are well prepared for each other's offense and defense. Here we go. Both men with the collar and tie. Ichigo side headlocks Elric. Elric pushing Ichigo to the ropes, whips him to the opposite side, ducks under, ducks over. And Nope, hip toss blocked. Ichigo used the momentum to hip toss Elric himself. And Elric is looking to score a victory here tonight. Ichigo with a side headlock once again. Elric. Gonna push Ichigo to the ropes one more time here. Ducks under. Ducks over. And a back body toss that time. Elric was able to capitalize. Once upon a time, Ichigo Kurosaki and Edward Elric were part of an evolution. And with that became one of the most feared and dominant stables in CAW. So they both went their separate ways. That became a messy affair between these two that led that stable. Now here we are in 2018. See Ichigo and Elric wrestle inside an ACW ring. As Elric reverses Ichigo's whip, ducks under once again. Ducks over. Oh, Big Boot was not connected there, but will counter with that nice jaw breaker. Onto Ichigo, whipped himself to the ropes here. Elbows Ichigo down on the mat. Goes for the quick pin attempt. One. Oh, wow, not even a one. Elric looking for a win here. Has not been real successful with these hand picked opponents that Roger Smith has tossed towards him. Here's a couple. Whoa, man, only a one. Not even a one, that was not even a one. Take a look at the offensive strikes of Edward Elric, just going after Ichigo to keep the man down. All right, and the knee to the sternum onto Ichigo. Goes for another quick pin attempt, one. And now he finally got a one count. So it's working. Double axe handle does not work there. Ichigo was able to move out the way at the ample time. Kick to the midsection. Kicks him right towards the sternum. And 
now Ishii will be the one to take advantage of the of the match so far here. And he snaps the neck breaker down on the mat. Oh, drops the knee. I seem like he dropped the knee onto the neck more so than the chest, but that might have been my angle from the screen here. Falls it up anyways with a nice overhead neck breaker. And I'm sure like Ichigo stated earlier, he knows that this is kind of unfair to Edward Orrick that he has to go through three weeks of grueling matches before his biggest challenge to date at Ground Zero in two weeks. Covered by Ichigo. One. Only a one. I'm sure Ichigo feels it's unfair that he has to fight Elric in this manner, that he has to fight him under these circumstances. But Ichigo knows that he wouldn't want Elric to go easy on him, and that Elric wouldn't want him to go easy on him. So this will be as competitive as it will get. So Ichigo from the middle rope here. Double axe handle, sends down the full metal alchemist. Another pin attempt here. One, and two, and Elric oh! Only gets a two there. Alright, Elric, front face lock. Sends Elric to the corner. Ah! Drops the elbow there, draws another elbow. Up to the face. And Elric with the big right! With his heavy hand too, right across Ichigo's face. This has been an incredible back and forth contest between Elric and Ichigo, as we all knew it would be, honestly. With this Elric trying to get a full Nelson all, but Ichigo gets out of it with an elbow. Knee to the midsection, and once again, looking to stop Elric back down on the mat. Elric dragged from the ropes there by Ichigo. Ichigo now looking to set something up from the top rope, it looks like. That does look like what he's doing here. Ah! Body splash! This, this could be it. One, two, stop! Only gets a two count from that big body splash on the top turnbuckle. Elric still in the game here, but Ichigo clearly in control so far. Big chop. It's another elbow to the face. Another elbow. Irish whip. Oh man, an elbow right across. Let's go to that spinning wheel kick. And just like that, Elric changes the course of the match, drops a big elbow, and this crowd and champagne is on fire for the supposed best in the world. And this is why Elric has frustrated me for these past couple of weeks. The man is good. He is great. When he's in that ring, he's one of the best generals in that ring compared to any anybody else, not only in ACW, but CAW in general. But damn it, his attitude just sucks. And the way he has been able to verbally attack this company and the people that are in charge does not bode well for a character like Edward Elric. As Ichigo went for a clothesline, did not connect there. Go for a suplex, Ichigo wants to get back on that neck with that neck breaker. Drops him down, quite frankly. Here's the pin attempt, one, and two, and throw off. Man, was that close. I don't know how close you can get here, folks. Two of the sequence hit again. Ichigo missed the clothesline, but will come back from that counter to the suplex and to a neck breaker, finally dropping his neck to the mat. Sends Elric to the corner here. Wait, 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 shit, I got me splashed, though! That looked like what he was trying to set up here, but Elric countered with an elbow. Fakes the Irish up. No, Ichigo kicks the midsection. As Elric got scoop, slams him down. This has been a great main event so far. As Ichigo is climbing to the top. Elric is down. El oh man, that double axe handle does not connect yet again. Ichigo. Oh man, a big boot to the chest by Edward Elric. And I'm sure that while he's wrestling Ichigo, he is telling Horror Glory, watch how I work. Watch what I do. Watch why I am considering myself the best in the world today. Because come ground zero, I am taking your time.
title and leaving with it. And I'll be damned if that's going to happen. Can you imagine the Excel Championship is not an ACW and somebody that left this company and is publicly stating it is leaving ACW as a whole and leaving the Excel title. That would be damaging to the Excel brand. That would even be damaging to the ACW brand. You may not like Roger Smith, but what he said last week about that was so true, and a lot of you people know that. Put your hatred towards it aside and look at the objective facts. It's the truth. That's Elrimus! It's going for a nice crossbody, but did not connect. And Ichigo is going to connect! Is he going to get it here? Oh my god, Soul Reaper! He was working on that neck throughout the match. He nails a Soul Reaper. And ladies and gentlemen, oh, Elric caught the ropes. Elric caught the ropes. Taking this devastating Soul Reaper. That could have been it for the Full Metal Alchemist. But that rope break saved him. That gave him another breath of life. Elric flips the German suplex attempt here. Oh my god, no way. Alchemy! Ichigo, the cover one, two, and the full metal. Oh my God! Ichigo kicked out at the at the two count from the alchemy. Ichigo going for a German suplex did not get it. Was countered into an alchemy, and that usually puts people away. But Ichigo kicked out at two, and now we're getting frustrated. Just stomping on the chest. As we're back live here in Champaign, Illinois, at the State Farm Center. And we we'll stop this crowd in a frenzy. Quite frankly, it's mixed. Ichigo and Elric have their fans, and they are letting it be known here tonight. But at the end of the day, we all win because this match is happening for the first time ever inside an ACW ring. And now Ichigo, got to go after Elric once again. Looks Elric to the opposite side of the corner, shooting on his splash. No, went for a clothesline, did not connect. Elric, front face lock. Knee by Ichigo to the midsection. Kick once again. Ichigo looking to capitalize. Whips Elric to the ropes here. And puts it up. Nope. Elric counters it. Splits the leg from behind. Whew. I am, ex I am as exhausted as you people watching this. Believe you me. Ichigo. Whipping out to the corner, knee to the midsection. Whips again, falls up with another knee. Ichigo wrestling very smart here as we're going out to the midsection of Nick throughout this entire match. And that's been wearing Elric down. But he needs to close here to get a victory. I think Ichigo's gonna go for a shooting on his splash there. Thought twice, thinking Elric might have reversed it and went for a shoulder thrust instead. That's the kind of smart wrestler that Ichigo is. And that's why he has been able to win multiple championships throughout his entire CAW career. Now Ichigo laying down some hard rights onto Elric to the corner. It's gonna lift Elric up. Ichigo getting a little fatigued. Had a little bit of trouble lifting Elric to the top of the turnbuckle. Gonna go for a maneuver from the top rope. This could be very scary here. Elric punching the side of Ichigo, pushes him off. Not gonna go down just yet. Elric, big body splash in the middle of the ring. Elric is going to defy the odds. Oh, not just yet. Woo! Folks, I don't know what else to say. I don't know how high. Of my octave voice, can I get here with this match? These are moments in time in ACW where we will look back and say, Where were you when you saw Ichigo and Elric wrestle inside ACW ring for the first time ever? As Elric once again dropped on his neck by Ichigo. But Elric refuses to die on this hill. And Elric will not die on this hill! Second alchemy in the middle of the ring! One, two, three! Are you serious? People don't, people barely kick out at one alchemy, but 
two? I don't think so. And Ulrich immediately on the corner. He spread his soul out of his body. Ulrich going for the cover. Once again, one, two. And Ulrich has to fit it into go. Holy crap. Two alchemies were not enough to put away. Both men stare each other down here. Ichigo extending the hand, and this time Elric shakes the hand. That is the level of respect these two have for each other. They may not be sending Christmas cards anytime soon, but that is a level of respect that those two have had for each other for many years. But on this night, Elric is victorious over the Soul Reaper, Ichigo Kurosaki. When the XL Champion Heart of Glory just arrived, What's this now? This can get interesting. Oh boy. And now Haru's standing in the hand. And Eric shakes it. Oh, wait a, wait a minute. What? Oh, oh, come on. Oh, and Alchemy to Haru. Yet again. Haru was just trying to shake his hand. And this man is assaulting him. And now the general manager, Roger Smith, back on stage. And the level of disrespect of Eric. Towards Haru continues. Ladies and gentlemen, Ground Zero will be an event we will never forget. <laughs>